on March 18th, I was accepted into the engineering program at the University of British Columbia. And in this video, I will break down my grades, stats, extracurriculars, and the personal profile that helped me to get in. This will be quite a long video, so I have put timestamps in the description below if you want to skip to a certain section that you want to learn more about. But I do want to make a disclaimer by saying that this video isn't meant to be a flex by any means. Just for context, I got rejected from UFT, Waterloo, and McGill, and I didn't even make early admissions for UBC either. I'm also not guaranteeing that if you follow exactly what I did, you will be accepted as well. Someone could write the exact same things as me and have the exact same grades and probably not get in. So I'm just putting this disclaimer out there. All right, on with the video. So with UBC, I will say that they are not transparent at all when it comes to the averages that you need to get into certain programs compared to, well, many other universities. As UBC weighs your grades and your personal profile on a case-by-case -case basis. So please take my word with a grain of salt because as I said before, you could have the exact same profile and stats as me and still not get in. For engineering, UBC looks at your grade 11 and 12 courses with a heavy emphasis on your academics such as math, science, and English courses. When I received my acceptance letter in March, UBC looked at all of my grade 11 marks and all of my grade 12 marks before February, which I will put up on screen right now. Averaging all of my grade 11 and 12 academic courses, my average is around a 93%. Quite high, but not necessarily outstanding in any sort of way. And factoring in my predicted marks for Calc 12 and Chem 12, my academic average will probably drop to around a 91 to a 92, depending on how well I do on my final exams. I honestly can't give a definitive number that if you have this average, you will be accepted. But what I can say from personal experience and from talking to people who have been accepted into the program in the past is to try to get your average at least into the 90% range, as this will give you the best chances to get accepted. That being said, I have heard instances of people where averages in the 95 and above range still don't get in. So again, take my word with a grain of salt. So those were my grades, but they're only one half of how UBC evaluates your application. The other half is the infamous personal profile. The personal profile gives you the chance to show UBC that you're more than just grades, but I've noticed that it's probably the most stressful thing about the application process. There's such a wide spectrum of things that you could write about, and an even bigger spectrum of ways that you could write about those things. In this section, I'll show you what my personal profile looked like and the extracurriculars that I talked about. The first prompt of the personal profile was, tell us about who you are. How would your family, friends, and or members of your community describe you? And if possible, please include something about yourself that you are most proud of and why. In this prompt, I talked about two of my most prominent traits, my diligence and my perfectionism. Talking about these traits allowed me to show UBC that I had the ability to work hard, but it also allowed me to be vulnerable in my own strive for perfection. And yes, it is okay to be vulnerable in an application. It's not necessary to express yourself as if you're a perfect person, and it also shows that you're able to deal with adversity and grow. This second prompt, which was arguably the hardest prompt to write about in my opinion, was what is most important to you and why? There were so many things that I could have written about, but I ultimately settled on talking about my experience mentoring others in band and in swimming lessons. I wrote about how mentoring others allowed me to work towards something bigger than myself, the ways that I went about mentoring others, how I worked with them, and how I developed their skills. The next prompt asked me to list up to five extracurricular activities and to describe each of them briefly. At first, I only really wanted to list the extracurriculars that I was the most involved in, but one of my editors recommended that I use up the whole five spaces because UBC likes applicants with a lot more to them than just grades. 
The extracurriculars that I listed were my involvement in band and music, my lifeguarding journey, my YouTube and video creation work, my job as a sales advisor at Best Buy, and my work as a volunteer at a youth program. In each of these descriptions, I briefly described my roles and responsibilities within each of these involvements. The final mandatory prompt had me choose one or two of the extracurriculars that I listed above and to describe them in much more detail. Now, I did get a little creative with this one. Because I had around a 350 word limit, I split my writing into three approximately 100 word sections. In the first section, I talked about my experience in band, explaining what it meant to me, my journey through high school band, and my accomplishments within it. In the second section, I wrote about my YouTube work, explaining what a YouTuber actually is, my video creation process, and all the soft skills that I learned along the way. And in the third section, this is where my big brain came into clutch. I wrote about how I combined both my experience in band and video creation to create a video of a stage performance of our wind ensemble band. I described the skills from each activity that I utilized in this project and the skills that I demonstrated and learned along the way. So those are all the mandatory personal profile prompts, but if you've ever heard anyone talk about university, they'll always say that if something on an application says it's optional, well, you'd better do it. And this holds true for this additional personal profile prompt, which asks you to describe your academic history and your plans for the future. Basically, why do you want to go into the program that you're applying to? Now, if you don't know me that well, you probably don't know that I want to pursue a degree in computer engineering. My rationale for this, which I wrote about, was that I've been fascinated with technology my whole life, and science and math courses have also always been my favorite courses. So technology plus math and science, boom, computer engineering. I highly advise that you fill out this prompt even though it does say optional, I definitely think that these extra about 100 words could give you that extra push over the edge for you to get accepted into UBC Engineering. Alright, that was a lot. And I can't believe that I spent over 4 months working on that one application alone. But I do have some final tips and advice if you really want to increase your chances of being accepted into UBC Engineering, as there's a lot more that I could have done with my application and some mistakes that I made with it along the way. First, and this is the thing that I didn't do well at all, but that is to cater your application to whatever program you're applying to. I got lucky that I didn't do this that well and I still got accepted, but I probably would have improved my application if I had some extracurriculars related to engineering, like joining a robotics club or doing my own personal engineering projects on the side. Second, start early. I remember in the summer before my grade 12 year, I asked one of my friends who applied the year before me for the application prompts and I started drafting my personal profile in August four months before the early application deadline. And lo and behold, the prompts were exactly the same, except they switched from a word count to a character count. And I was pretty much able to gain an extra month to work on it just by starting early. Third, editing. I would recommend to find three to five people who know what a good application looks like and to ask them for feedback on your application. With my application personally, I got two English teachers, my French teacher, and a family friend studying at UBC to help review my application, and I'm really grateful for their advice. And finally, focus on what you can control. Much of what happens within the university application process is completely out of your control. You can't control who reads your application, when they read it, or what they think of you. So it's kind of useless to whine about it. Instead, focus on what you can control. Things like your grades, your extracurriculars, and the quality of your application. Because ultimately, the overarching question that all university applications ask you is, 
given all other things equal, what makes you different? So focus on how you want to stand out. And that's pretty much all that I can say about how I got into UBC engineering. Again, please take everything that I've said with a grain of salt because I don't know what goes on behind admissions office doors. And frankly, there's a lot more that I could have done if I really want to make early admission, which by the way, I did not make. But hopefully this video gave you a sense of the quality of student that UBC Engineering is looking for. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video helped you out in some way, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.